Jesuit Robotics Team, Team 2848. And uh, along with me, uh, I have two other seniors uh, for the team. We have Drew Curran over here, uh, Ben Obenshire on my right, and I myself and Kieran Shelley. And this is our story. So at noon on April 26, 2014, we were only ranked 72nd out of 100 teams at the Robotics World Championship. But five hours later, we were standing in the middle of the field wearing these golden medals and surrounded by thousands of screaming spectators. How did we get from 72nd to first? Our path to the winner's circle didn't start that day at noon when we won the elimination tournament. It didn't start two months before that when we qualified for the national event at the Dallas Regional. It didn't even start the first day that we heard the competition in January of 2014. Instead, a full year earlier, with our 32-member team, we sat down and decided that the 2014 season would need a new, uh, a new essence to it, teamwork. Now for a little background on our team. The Jesuit Robotics team has been around for seven years, and since the beginning we've grown from just six students and one adult mentor working in a garage to over 40 students and a little under a dozen adult mentors working in a 4,500 square foot shop. We participate in the first robotics challenge, also known as FRC. FRC gives a challenge to us and high schoolers around the entire world in early January. We then have six weeks to build a robot to answer that challenge. After the six weeks are up, we put the robots in regional competitions in hopes of making it to nationals. These regional competitions are made up of qualification matches leading to March Madness style elimination matches with three teams from each uh, regional making it to nationals. But, th but this isn't the only similarity that robotics has to sports. Just like on a sports team, each member has to know the game and practice if the team hopes to do well during matches. Also like a sports team, everyone has a role, and they need to fulfill that role in order to succeed in competition. This is where we were having trouble. Up until the 2014 season, we weren't working as a team. Everyone wasn't pulling their own weight, and as a result, we weren't anywhere near reaching our full potential. All right, now for a little question for the audience. Can you guys raise your hand if you've ever been in a group project where you had to do all the work by yourself? <laughs> now, keep them raised if that's because everyone else in the group just didn't know how to help you guys. So it's a pretty common thing. And that was, that was the main trouble we were having with our own team. Well, I came face to face with this problem my freshman year. I really wanted to join robotics because my brother was in it, and I saw all the amazing things he was doing with robotics and engineering. Unfortunately, though, the only thing I was able to do freshman year was fulfill the very prestigious role of vacuum captain. <laughs> that was a pretty big deal. Uh, but see, the problem was is that the seniors never taught us, the underclassmen, what we needed to know to help. And this created a vicious cycle of the seniors doing all the work and then us sitting off on the side wondering what we could do to help because they didn't have time to teach us. It was very frustrating. We tried to learn what we could by watching, but there was just too much going on and too much to learn, and we were overwhelmed. If we, were, uh, we were lacking teamwork, to say the least. If we were a sports team, we were the team that had three or four really talented players who picked up the slack for the rest of the team. And that's why my first year on the FRC team was filled with stress and chaos instead of teamwork and success. The entire season, we had half-finished projects and parts lying all over the shop, and the seniors were always racing around constantly trying to put together something that at least resembled a functioning robot. The other underclassmen and I, we were left to our own devices. We wanted to help where we could, but we didn't want to get in the way of the seniors. At one point, it got so bad that I walked into the shop one day and saw that the robot looked completely different. Over the course of a couple weeks, we had completely changed the intake, a major part of our robot, and I hadn't even noticed because we weren't working as a team. We were letting a couple people do all the work while everybody else just kind of stood on the sidelines. Okay, now fast forward to the end of that wonderfully mediocre 2013 season. <laughs> and we sat down, just like we do every year as a team, to discuss what we did well and what we might want to improve on in the coming season. This year was different, though. We decided that we were going to make a change. After years of being stuck in a cycle where the seniors did everything, and, we didn't, and as a team, we didn't pull our own weight, we made a decision that we were going to strengthen each individual member so that in the coming 2014 season, we could unite everybody and we could work as a team to succeed. That summer and the following off season, we put in countless hours to make sure that everyone would have something to do and work on for the robot of the 2014 season. 
We first held manufacturing workshops, design classes, even some team building activities in preparation for this. So come January of 2014, when we first heard of the challenge, we were ready. We saw the change immediately when everyone, instead of having one small group off to the side doing all the work, we had uh, and another group uh, where everyone just didn't know how to help and was just standing there idly, we had one cohesive unit uh, working together, making sure that our robot was the best it could be. As a team, we put in over 2,000 hours working on this 2014 robot, with each member con uh, contributing about 60 hours on average. For me, I was working on the design team, so as soon as we had our basic design in the back of our minds, I was there to 3D model it uh, when, we dis when, when we try to move it all to uh, being manufactured. Now, uh, in the end, only one small part about this big a small bracket on the side of the robot ended up getting used for my original design. But it didn't matter, because what it symbolized was uh, what I helped to contribute to the team to make us so successful. And just like me, everyone else on the team contributed one small piece to the robot, and in the end, it made us so successful that we're standing here today before you as world champions. So, back to our original question. How do we get from 72nd to first? Well, we did as a team, by working hard and working together. The focus on teamwork led to success. We were able to meet all the demands of the challenge. We had enough people to design the robot, to prototype the different things that we might want to put on the robot, and then when we found bugs, we were able to redesign the robot to make it even better. Overall, this made it so that we had a very solid robot. Despite all the success we had, the other seniors and I realized that we still have a long way to go with teamwork. And especially after this season, we are more dedicated than ever to making teamwork a priority on our team. So robotics was what gave us insight into the importance of how big teamwork is on a project, and we would love it if everybody had that same experience we did. So we challenge each of you to get involved in your community, and more importantly, encourage the young people in your life to do the same. If you're interested, the FIRST Robotics program has plenty of opportunities to volunteer as a mentor, but you can also go out into your communities and volunteer as coaches and mentors for your kids and their uh, friends. Take our robotics team, for example. Or remember. Everybody, everybody, every skill is important. Everybody can benefit from whatever skill you have to offer. Our robotics team, for example, we need uh, mechanical engineers and electrical engineers. We have a statistician and a programmer, and they all help us with the technical side. But that doesn't run a robotics team. We also need funding and outreach. So we have business professionals and marketing majors to help us with that side, too. If you look at our team as an analogy, you are the seniors. And although it's really, really important that you get involved in any way you can, it's equally important that you, work, that you work to help the young people in your life succeed and learn the goals that they will need and learn the skills that they will need in the future. Thank you so much. All right. So what is that over there? That is not the the robot that you won the competition with, is that right? Correct. This is a t-shirt cannon. Oh, a t-shirt cannon, huh? I'm sorry. It, I think it's just what it sounds like, yeah? yeah. It is. Yes, exactly so. <laughs> so. We saw an excellent demonstration. Are we going to be able to duplicate that demonstration? Well, we've got our t-shirts. We hope to. And a cannon. And uh, this is air pressure? This is hydraulics? What do we got here? We, have, we have air pressure with the scuba tank. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see how it works. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Who wants a t-shirt? Uh, How far can that thing shoot? Yeah. All right, over here. <laughs> right? I think ballistically, sir, you don't have a chance, but... <laughs> So, so a few technical questions. How, how fast are those things coming out? Or what kind of pressure are we talking about? What's the, what are the specs on the teacher of Ganon? Uh, I'm going to have to say about, it's at least the initial launch velocity would be somewhere around 20 miles per hour. And you did tell me a story, but you didn't say it from the stage. You have launched um, non-t-shirt items from the t-shirt launcher. <laughs> Is that we fair have. to say? I'm not, right? We have. Now, we do launched, you want to tell us about that? We launched two Chipotle burritos. <laughs> <laughs> one of which did better than the other one, but the other one was delicious. So, so you had a post-launch snack. Yes, yes we yes. did.
trick in the book though it's like do you want to go help me find the t-shirt in the catwalk yeah. as if these guys need any help rocking robotics medals <laughs> And what is the t-shirt cannon made of? What is that siding there that uh, looks like it's been custom milled for you? Uh, we, had a, we had a couple of machine shops help us. We designed the, the parts for it, and then we, we went and outsourced the metalworking to different companies, so they helped us machine out the sheet metal. Nice. And what was that? That was a little uh, misfire on the... Okay, well, I think we got it. Thank you very much, Jesper Robotics. Fantastic job, guys. Thank you.